All right, I think we are ready to get started, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Amy Matizic, and I'm Internal Communications Manager for School District 49. And once again, I'm so happy to be here tonight to be presenting Fantastic 49 to all of you. Tonight, we will be honoring a total of four different honorees, all four going above and beyond, whether it's in the classroom or outside the classroom. Tonight, we'll, we will be honoring a student, as well as a teacher, as well as someone from the community, and also someone from the business office. So we have a nice cross-section of individuals tonight. Our student is definitely someone who has gone above and beyond inside the classroom, as well as actually racing to success, literally outside the classroom. The business office team member that we are going to honor is someone who's been a huge asset with the Business Plus transition, as well as someone who definitely portrays our, our cultural compass every day. And the teacher that we're gonna be honoring tonight is someone who innovates within the classroom with her students, as well as inspires her fellow colleagues. And our community members tonight that we'll be honoring is someone who is truly making the grade by how often they are in our classroom volunteering for elementary students. So without further ado, we will get started. And we will kick it off by honoring a fifth grade student from Bennett Ranch Elementary School. And this young man, Justice Sokol, actually won a national quarter midgets race car competition last fall. But that's not the only reason that we're here to honor him today, because as his teacher will explain, he goes above and beyond in the classroom, as well as with this extracurricular activity. So here today to help honor him is a teacher from Bennett Ranch, fifth grade teacher, Katie Polson. Um, Justice is just a great example of what a District 49 student should be and should act and what a Bennett Ranch Bull means. At Bennett Ranch, we have a saying that is bulls lead the way and justice definitely leads the way for our students and, uh, at Bennett Ranch and for our community in the National Racing Championship circuit. Uh, he's an excellent student. He always tries, strives to do his best. Um, at Bennett Ranch, we have um, three mission. Uh, as part of our mission, we've got a firm foundation, grit, and creativity. He definitely has that firm foundation in his academics. He, as his travels have taken him all over the country this past year, he's able to keep up with that academics and do excellent in all of those areas that he needs to do. He has grit to race a race car and be a national champion definitely takes grit and creativity. You have to balance that whole um, uh, racing and that academics and his parents that they always say academics come first and he definitely does that and who doesn't he has his own trading card that i have signed too so i'm hoping that he is racing nascar one day and i can say i was his fifth grade teacher so congratulations justice thank you so much for being a better ranch bull and showing how bulls lead the way Um, just first off, I'd like to thank my teacher and um, just my parents for helping me race and just helping me on my journey to get to this point. Yay! Nice job. Congratulations. What is a quarter midget? 
midget. Explain what that is to me. Um, a quarter midget is a gas-powered car that is um, that races on pavement and it goes about maybe 45 some odd miles an hour. I'm not sure exactly, but uh, yeah. And you are wearing your helmet, correct? Yes. Yes, sir. <laughs> along with other safety devices, fantastic. What's your favorite part? Um, my favorite part is just meeting new people and um, getting to experience new places at different times and just all the competition. Do you participate doing the maintenance on the vehicle? Sometimes I do, but it's really all my parents and uh, everyone else that works in the team. Just getting on the car early in the morning, late in the night, keeps doing it. and Late night in the garage for my dad, <laughs> usually every day, that's basically what it is. <laughs> Congratulations to you, Justice. Our next honoree tonight comes from the business office, and this individual who is someone that not only steps up on big projects, like with the Business Plus transition, but also on a daily basis. When the nomination came in for her, um, the individual that wrote it up basically said, I wish we had more Michelle Garretts. So here to help us honor Michelle Garrett tonight is the accounting group manager, Jody Pullen. Hello, everybody. Um, I just want to take a few minutes to uh, talk about Michelle. Um, she told me that just a simple thank you would be good enough, but I don't think that's um, Let me read what here I have on here. The business office is a fast-paced office environment where no day is quite like the day before. Michelle shows exemplary de dedication to D49 and goes above and beyond each and every day. She is always willing to help a fellow co-worker in the office or an admin secretary at one of our schools and departments. Michelle goes above and beyond, as I said, each and every day. She lights up the room with her smile and is a delight to work with. She ensures her responsibilities are done to the best of her ability, asking questions that extend her knowledge. With our transition to Business Plus in July, Michelle took on a role that she may have not been asked to do or really been aware of. She became the best resource to learn our new accounting software um, from the schools and department level. Michelle gets calls daily for staff asking for assistance with creating a purchase requisition, how to receive on a purchase order, or simply how to get information out of our new system. She does not bat an eye, even if it happens to be the same person day after day. Michelle is also great, has built great relationships with vendors, as her duties include keeping them in compliance with W-9 forms, paying specific vendors with our purchase cards on a weekly basis, following up with banking and EFT questions for us to pay them electronically. Keep in mind some of those things new to us as of July. Um, I often sit in my office and I'm so thankful that we have a V Michelle Garrett on our side. Michelle's face should be next to the D49 mission for the best place to, to learn, work, and lead. I can certainly speak on many other aspects on how Michelle models our mission's behavior, but as I said, she told me to keep it short and I wasn't okay with that. Um, Michelle's respect and care for others is off the charts. Um, every day, um, she just, she brings a smile to anybody that walks in that door. She always has a smile. 
Um, she's one of the only people that I know that could be frustrated and still have a smile on her face and, and ready to attack the world um, in a good way. Um, so I know that Brett also wants to say a few words, but um, I want to thank the board for allowing us to have the Fantastic 49 and that Michelle um, is definitely the top of that chart. And it was evidence as we did our, our bio learning tours this fall because the way those were structured, we went around schools and departments and they would have the opportunity to invite someone in from the small business operations or whatever. And I think Michelle went to more learning tours than anyone else um, because everyone uh, has interacted with their values, uh, values or appreciates her. Yes, so thanks a lot for helping me. Not smiling now. Well, that's very nice words, and I thank you very much. Thank you. A woman of minimal words. So. <laughs> that is right. <laughs> okay, so who did I put your picture next to the best of it? We make room here. Do We're not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> no. What inspires you, especially with the transition to Business Plus? That inspires you when people call going. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I can understand their frustration, and I try to put myself in their position and try to be, you know, find a solution or explain it where they understand it and, and reassure them that they're not the only one that is having that problem and they're, it, it's not, um, they're not alone. What is your favorite part of what you do each day? Oh, I have fun. We, it is a fun. <laughs> there are a lot of characters in our office. And they're funny. And it's, it's nice to come to work and, you know, someone makes you laugh. And, and then when you get that phone call, you're, you're in a good mood so you can be nice. <laughs> You'll also notice that there are many of your colleagues here who are here to recognize and honor you on, you know, on this type of night, too. So I hope that emanates towards you from not just the leaders, but your colleagues. I do appreciate that. And I don't know what I'm going to have to do, <laughs> but we'll work on it. You're wonderful. We're honored to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, Michelle. The next individual that we would like to honor tonight from D49 is a teacher. And she is being recognized for her innovative style of teaching. She is a teacher at Allies, one of our schools that's a little bit unique. But she's also being recognized because the individual who wrote her up for Fantastic 49 said she found her to be inspiring to her and encouraging. The individual that wrote her up 
Um, sometimes we get the nominations from building leaders and sometimes not. In this case, it was from a fellow teacher. It was from Stephanie Rizzo. And again, it was largely because she said that she found her to be an inspiration to her. Unfortunately, Stephanie did have, Stephanie Rizzo had a family emergency today and could not be here, but her building principal, Rebecca Thompson, is here to speak on Stephanie Hazleton's behalf. So, Rebecca. So I just wanted to reiterate for a moment that um, Stephanie Hazleton was nominated by Stephanie Rizzo, who is a regular education paraprofessional in Allies. Um, and this, I think, speaks volumes for a few reasons. She is in every classroom in our school all week long, every week. And so for her to really pull one of our professors at such a high level, I think that speaks volumes for uh, Stephanie Hazelton. So I wanted to read what Stephanie Rizzo wrote about Stephanie Hazelton uh, because Stephanie really wanted to hear or wanted her to be able to understand what she sees in her. So she wrote, Stephanie Hazelton is the innovation professor at the Academy for Literacy, Learning, and Innovation Excellence. For each young mind touched, teachers across the board deserve a badge of honor for their participation and dedication in the journey of learning. Stephanie's teaching style demonstrates the qualities that are essential in the inspiration, growth, and accountability for each of her students. She encourages her classes to be creative, productive, and to aim high for, with the best of their abilities. Stephanie supports individuality, but teaches the importance of teamwork as well. Her lessons incorporate critical thinking, resourcefulness, organi organization, and problem solving. Each aspect contrib contributes to the increased performance of her students. Along with her outstanding work, she's an amazing colleague, and she continuously inspires all of those who work around her. Thank you, Mrs. Hazelton, for your continued devotion to our students at Allies. We appreciate and love everything you do. I also wanted to finish just by saying that when an award comes about in any avenue, one of the first names to come up in our building is Stephanie Hazelton. So we want to honor her for this award and for many more in which her name comes up um, around the school and around the district. Well, thank you for the recognition, and um, it's a pleasure to work in District 49, and especially at Allies, where I've been given the opportunity to be innovative. I love creating um, authentic learning experiences for my students and allowing them to meet, um, allowing all my lessons to meet their needs. And Mrs. Thompson and the staff at Allies are amazing and making it a great place to work. And um, their dedication is just remarkable, and I feel blessed to be a part of it. And then thanks to my family, too, for being a big support. With the specialization of allies, being so specific, you know, as opposed to a general education type of school building, what do you find most rewarding in teaching at Alice specifically for you? Um, our First of all, the parents want their students to be there, and our students are very excited to be at Allies. And we just have so many hands-on opportunities for them to showcase their learning other than the traditional methods. Our final honoree for tonight is a community member, Karen Hopper, and she simply lives in the neighborhood of Meridian Ranch Elementary School and volunteers there a lot. I heard the teachers appreciate her and the students adore her. So here to help honor her tonight is one of our teachers, Ashley Mullins. She will come up and share a little bit about Karen. So kindergarten style, we made a sign for her and had all of our kindergartners sign it. Um, 
I don't know how we got so lucky to have her live in our neighborhood and come volunteer at our school, but we are beyond blessed. She comes in every single day with a smile, and parents have asked who she is. Other staff members have asked who she is. And I'm like, she's just a volunteer that comes in. But you are so much more than that. You are truly part of our team, and we adore you. She can't walk into my classroom without all of the kids jumping out of their seat and hugging her. And today was Valentine's Day. They have piles of Valentines for her, and she just belongs with us. And so we love you so much, and thank you for spending time with us and caring for our students. Thank you so much for this recognition. I love these ladies and I love all the children in their Wonderful, wonderful to work with, and bring so much joy to my life. We love you back. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you're one of the many volunteers that make our district happen. I want to say thank you for that, making that happen. You, with our volunteers, and my three fellow colleagues, four including Fred Fry, are an honor to be a a part of the district with you. Thank you for your work that you make happen. Thank you. How do we help other people to realize that they're able to help either in the classroom or serve on the board? What do you think are the keys to having people get involved in our public schools? Oh gosh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how. I know a lot of people have busy lives nowadays and they have a hard time coming in to volunteer. And I'm retired, so I thought I'd go. I love the kids, so I thought I'd go and put some time in at the school, and I loved it even more than what I even imagined it would be. The staff is wonderful, too. Not just the team of ladies that I work with, but the whole staff is awesome. They've been so welcoming. Spread the message, and I <laughs> 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 So that extended family isn't there for many of us and for many of our kids. And so thank you for being a part of that extended family for our kids at Bernie and Ranch, because I bet they're all seeing you as that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You obviously enjoy it. Why do you, what, what makes you keep coming back? What, what, what makes you always come up and see it? Well, the teachers, for one, this team of, of kindergarten teachers are amazing. And the kids are such a delight and they make me laugh all day long <laughs> and I just love them. I just really love them. Thank you. Uh-huh. <laughs> 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 we have 115 kindergarten names. <laughs> 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 for helping make District 49 fantastic. And that concludes our Fantastic 49 presentation.
May I have a roll call, please? Richard? Present. Cruson? Here. Fry? I'm um, asking prior notice, so Graham? No, I'm here. Libya Wright? Here. I'd like to welcome everyone out tonight. Please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We're on to item 3.0, approval of agenda. May I have a motion, please? I move to approve the agenda. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing on a vote. Butcher? Aye. Cruson? Aye. Graham? Aye. Livia Wright? Aye. Motion carries. We're on to item 4.0, consent agenda. I move to approve the consent agenda. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing on a vote. Butcher? Aye. Cruson? Aye. Graham? Aye. Livia Wright? Aye. Motion carries. We're on to item 5.0, um, board update. And so we can start with Kevin. I have nothing. Dave? Uh, congratulations to the Vista Ridge High School men's basketball team. Goalball champions in District 49. Any word on the women? I'm not sure it's decided yet. Ooh, ooh I like him. Okay. No, I just want to say thanks to everybody for their participation here uh, in our district, especially the volunteer being able to honor one of our community volunteers that makes it happen. At our annual planning summit, we talked about how do we encourage further leadership uh, within our district. And I think that's an overall challenge. It's not something we necessarily lay on our chief officers. It's not necessarily we something we as directors can do because sometimes it seems like we may have an agenda or have a specific person for a specific uh, agenda. Uh, personal agenda item that they may have wanted to guide through the district, but we really want to encourage our community to get involved, whether it be in the schools, uh, be in the district level, or even be a board member, it would be fantastic. So all of our community members uh, feel like they have a stake and a part of what's going on. I specifically looked up the deck. We had the report from last month uh, from them, and that, that is probably one of the greatest community ways to know about our district and what goes on, uh, specifically with staff members, our chiefs have provided uh, various presentations and other people have presented about our district to the district accountability committee and uh, I want to say thanks to everybody who's involved in that and encourage people in our community not just parents but even outside folks retired community members business owners anybody to get involved in our district and engage and if you have questions about serving on board or any other part of our district you're welcome to speak to any of the five of us or uh, any of the principals or our chief officers <coughs> So I actually got a lot today, uh, which is unusual, so I'll take some of Kevin's time. Yeah. I attended a uh, special education advisory council meeting uh, this Monday and found out from Dr. Gene Rice that we are uh, introducing a system called IXL at every school within the district for the, our uh, special education students. And that's going to consist of uh, 12 books for each school with a population. And uh, it's, IXL is an initiative, basically, an intuitive intervention for math, literacy, social studies, and science. And, you know, talking to several people, they're really looking forward to the rollout of uh, this system within the schools for the SPED community. Also, today is the inclusion conference, uh, today and tomorrow, and I'd like to hear more from that when, uh, when our attendees get back from it. I also got to meet our occupational therapist, Brian Can which uh, is pretty, I don't know if it's unique to the school district, but it was uh, listening to what he does and, you know, basically what our physical therapist and everybody in the whole team does is pretty uh, insightful for me. So I also know that they're doing suspended learning for leadership on the 20th of February. So I wanted to say, it's, you know, that's important, you know, to at least be on the board and I would think about other board members. Uh, so I'd like to know how that goes. As well, you know, maybe next time we meet, get an update on that. I also met with our CTE, Career and Technical uh, Education and Workplace Learning Team, and Bob, and learned a lot about the programs that we have within the district, what the different zones are doing. They do, do some things a little differently, and uh, 
kind of where we're going. So I'm looking to hear about those updates as well as we uh, progress. And then last but not least, I attended a uh, Parents' Choice Night put on by Parents' Challenge, which is a uh, organization. And we had uh, about four or five schools attend that to basically tell this is our school, this is what we do. There were actually something like 45 or 50 throughout the region that attended. And I got to learn about other school districts, other schools, both public and private, the charter schools. Allies was there, and a bunch of our other guys, our CTE and uh, C guys were there. And it was really, uh, it was really neat to bounce around and get basically hit every booth, get every little box checked for the contest, which I didn't win. But, uh, to learn all about what other districts are doing, uh, other schools are doing, and uh, you know, seeing that really the region, you know, comes together as a conglomerate, you know, as they as they work on, you know, what are the best solutions for the student populations within our region. So that was uh, pretty nice to hear, and then we got some more later on that. And then uh, for our social and emotional health issues that uh, will be constantly face year round. There was an organization there called the National Alliance on Mental Health, Mental Illness. They handed me a bunch of uh, ambassador posters and stuff like that, which I was going to introduce to the board. But I also found out that our schools are already doing this. They put up these posters so kids feel that they have a place to go when they are maybe afraid or maybe uncertain about something. And they have someone that they can talk to. And as we've talked about before, school systems are becoming, you know, basically support for the kids, you know, in our, at least our country, but definitely our region, where we're, we're providing services that were never provided when I was a kid. And, uh, and it's good to see that D49 in our region are forerunners on all of these issues. Well, and I will just comment that I uh, I heard from some folks in the community some great comments about our schools and their representation at Parents Challenge. So I heard from some attendees, and so I'm, I'm really glad that our folks were there and able to share some of what they're doing. Um, I also want to acknowledge we have a Boy Scout here with us, Amiibo, who is working on a merit badge, Jackson. And so, hi Jackson, thank you for coming and choosing this for your Hopefully we will we'll be able to get through some things that might be at least a little interesting, but um, the school board has a lot of boring stuff too, I promise. Um, so, and then I'd also like to introduce our student rep um, for this meeting is Tyler Horton from Spring Studio. So he's representing our student board of representatives and he'll be able to give an update in a few minutes, but I wanted Jackson to know um, that a part of that structure too is something that's rather unique to our school district. There are a few others in the state that do it. We actually have two students um, who represent the student body and are able to give us feedback about some of the decisions we're making to make sure that we have student voice when we make those decisions. And there's representatives from each of our high schools and they meet as a group and talk about what's on our agenda and make sure that that group voice is heard at our meeting. Uh, so that is something we've incorporated to make sure that we hear student voice too and we've asked them to start listening to some of the other kids as well. So according to our agenda, our chief officer update will be next and then our student board update. So um, for chief officers, um, Mr. Almeida, did you want to start? Sure. Um, don't spend a lot of time here talking about uh, nutrition services, but this is a time when we're going to talk about nutrition services and some absolutely fantastic uh, results. <coughs> so every three to four years, we have an audit of nutrition services uh, from, uh, from the state. Uh, this audit takes a look at everything that we do in our nutrition services program, um, how we account for meals, the quality of the food, uh, adherence to a lot of regulations and a lot of requirements that are constantly changing uh, because these are federal requirements that are in a constant state of flux. So every single year there's a new um, <coughs> twist to rules and regulations that are coming from the FDA. Uh, Nutrition Services has an absolutely outstanding program. I think everyone understands that. Uh, they had a review, the last review they had was in uh, March of 2015. Uh, at that review, they had 
18 corrective actions and 33 areas of technical assistance. Those are very low numbers like what they had in 2015. That's, that's a very solid, very good program, especially when you look at a district the size of ours. We just completed their audit this year. They had one corrective action and they had three areas of technical assistance. The examiners that were here looking at us said that in the two years that she's been doing this, it's absolutely unheard of for an organization of our size to have one corrective action. Uh, it is simply phenomenal. In the area of corrective action that they talked about was one where we had uh, student count reconciling count between what we claim and what we actually have, and we were off by a number of six out of 72,000. Um, that's the one area of technical business or corrective action. Uh, to say that we are proud of that team and what they're doing, and it's very understated and it's very quiet across the district because every single day they're serving meals and every single day they're 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 uh, they're providing for our students and making sure that they have healthy meals and and that the food quality is good. But they're also keeping the district out of trouble because they're making sure that we're adhering to all the regulations and all the requirements that we have up there. So they deserve a tremendous amount of credit across the entire organization. I asked a group of kitchen managers, all of them, uh, what did they attribute their success to? And they pointed out to three key points. One was leadership within the within their department, one was teamwork, and one was just the genuine care that all of these teamworkers have and all these nutrition services technicians have for making sure that these kids are taken care of well. So they deserve a tremendous amount of recognition for, for that work because that's not something that you do in one day. This is something that you do sustained day in and day out for months and months and weeks and years. So uh, we're very proud of what they've done and I want to make sure that everybody hears how proud we are of what they've done. And that's all I'll talk about tonight. Thank you. That, that, is, that is fantastic stuff and, and, and no surprise, we you know that's been a fantastic department for a long time uh, here in the district and a great, a great example for us all to pursue uh, performance excellence really is what that is. Is that our next fantastic 49? Is the whole operations department? Uh, <laughs> nutrition services. Uh, we would have recognized it tonight. We already have a full agenda tonight, but they, they will. You'll be hearing about the next fantastic point. Attended the case conference last week, and uh, was glad to see that we had several of our of our team uh, making presentations there to uh, to continue to um, show the rest of the state you know, the good things that we're doing here at District 49. So it's very very proud of, of the team doing that. Most of the area school business officials meeting uh, yesterday it was our, our once a year turn for that. Uh, and as the legislative session is starting to pick up some speed, uh, we're having good involvement up there. Uh, I've had several good meetings, um, some of the key players on school finance. And so I think we're, we, uh, we're being brought into the conversation really early on now, which is, uh, which is really helpful. And then, this year we might be able to play a little offense instead of always having to play defense uh, like we've been doing uh, the last few years. So that will be uh, that will be good, exciting, and I'm glad that Tom is here. Tom Sister is our auditor here to make a presentation to you later on about our results from 1718. Several of really exciting things happened over the last week. Uh, as a, a as a former um, high school wrestler, I was really excited that Vista Ridge uh, senior Mel Washington was our our district's first and our region's first state champion. Uh, this is the first year that we had a sanctioned state championship wrestling meet, and uh, so you will be seeing Bella in April, I believe, at Fantastic Forty Nine. So we get to thank her and congratulate her in person. But super tremendous, incredible achievement, and there can only be one first state champion in a weight class. So that's a pretty exciting uh, thing to have in our, in our school's history. Um, I, I also had the real privilege of traveling with uh, the leadership from the Falcon Zone, uh, along with Kathy Pickering, who is now in a central office role, and Melissa Riggs, who's in a central office ed tech role, as that team was recognized as one of seven uh, districts nationally for their work in, in something called digital convergence, which is using technology effectively to deliver modern, which means blended and tech supported learning. Um, the Falcon Zone has, has been a pioneer and sometimes pioneers get, uh, they 
they, they take some blows, but they keep on coming. And the Falcons zone has done a great job of persisting and, and carrying the vision. And so to see them be recognized for that was very exciting. I think as the as the National Convergence Conference moves forward in future years, there's a real chance that conference will come here so that other districts from around North America can come and learn about uh, the good things that are going on there. So it was really exciting to see. And then that team actually got to present again in Colorado at the case conference uh, that Brett mentioned. So that was really neat to see. And, and here's a, a final thing um, that I, I think we should take some encouragement from and some inspiration from. But uh, yesterday, last night, actually, the school board in Harrison School District 2 decided that they are not going to hire a superintendent. They're going to hire a team of two superintendents. And that's largely because uh, their experience there and our encouragement here has shown them that this is a stable model. Uh, it's a model that, where you get a lot more productivity because you have multiple experts. Uh, I know their two leaders well, Wendy and John. They have very different skill sets, but very complementary skill sets. And so I think we ought to be excited to see another local district uh, come on to the team leadership train. So Harrison, welcome aboard. <laughs> And now the student board update with Tyler. Uh, there's not too big of an update other than the board is very supportive of the current mental issue pushes that you guys are uh, in development of and pushing out like the posters. I've seen those go around the school and those are actually going very well at my school. And so I hope they're doing the others. Thank you. So our next item is our open forum. We have everybody signed up, probably not. All right. Then we're on to, except I recognize everybody sitting out there. So <laughs> the employees are like, nah, we prefer not to be an open forum speaker too, thanks. Um, so now we are on to our action items. And um, we do tend to move through these fairly quickly because we have discussed these at prior work sessions, so our questions have already been answered. And so with that, we're on to action item 7.01, new job description, 7.01A. May I have a motion, please? After board review at the prior work session, I move to approve the job description in item 7.01A as recommended by the administration. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none of vote. Switcher? Aye. Person? Aye. Graham? Aye. Olivia Wright? Aye. Motion carries. We're on to item 7.01B, Zone Executive Principal. May I have a motion, please? With board discussion at previous meetings, I move to approve the job description in item 7.01B as recommended by the administration. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none of vote. Butcher? Aye. Person? Aye. Graham? Aye. Olivia Wright? Aye. Motion carries. We're on to 7.02. May I have a motion on 7.02, please? I move to approve a name change for a Vista Ridge High School course, one act play, two, theater performance. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none of vote. Butcher? Aye. Cruson? Aye. Graham? Aye. Olivia Wright? Aye. Motion carries. We're on to 7.03. Action on revised job description. May I have a motion, please? I move to approve the revised physical therapist job description in item 7.03 as recommended by the administration. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none of vote, please. Butcher? Aye. Cruson? Aye. Graham? Aye. Olivia Wright? Aye. Motion carries. We're on to 7.04. May I have a motion, please? After a first read of the previous board session, I move to approve revisions to the five policies listed in item 7.04 as recommended by the administration. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none of vote, please. Butcher? Aye. Cruson? Aye. Graham? Aye. Libya Wright? Aye. Motion carries. We're on to item 7.05. May I have a motion, please? I move to approve the long form vision statement as recommended in the previous work session, which is we endeavor to be the best choice in education by respecting the voice of our community, delivering valued pathways for students, and pursuing performance excellence. Second. It's been moved and second. Any discussion? Hearing none of them, please. Butcher? Aye. Cruson? Aye. Graham? Aye. 
would be a right. Aye. Motion carries. For item 7.06, we had no items removed from the consent agenda. Item 8.0 is all information items that are provided for the board's information but aren't included in discussion unless anyone has explicit questions. So did anybody have anything they need to ask about any of the information items that are not confidential? No. John, did you have anything? No? No. Okay, thank you. So then we are on to our discussion items. And our first discussion, 9.01, is our eagerly awaited financial audit results. Because we always know they do an amazing job. Sorry, I wasn't quite ready. Um, I'm used to going last. Um, <laughs> pretty close. Uh, Jody Cole, accounting group manager. Um, I just want to thank the board for their patience. Um, I know we had an extension this year um, with our transition to Business Plus. A lot of my focus was making sure the everyday bills were getting paid and money was coming in. So um, I do appreciate your patience on that. Um, but I'm going to turn the floor over to Tom's. Sister. Yep. Right, right in line. <laughs> from, holding, um, from holding a company um, to give you some audit results for us. Thank you very much. Happy to be here tonight to talk about the audit, especially to, uh, you know, just give kudos to the uh, staff here because it really is uh, quite a bit of their time to, uh, uh, as we keep them hopping along and providing the information that uh, we need to get through the audit. So uh, much appreciated. I uh, passed, passed out just a, uh, a two-page summary for you there that I'm going to uh, uh, move along. And if you have, of course, any questions uh, specific to uh, the details of the audit, we can hit that as well. So first of all, we were on site for about a week in late May, uh, testing controls and compliance. And then we based our, uh, based our audit plan uh, on, the, on the results of those tests. Uh, performed the field work over a week uh, towards the end of September. Uh, we found that the overall financial condition of the district is strong and the financial statements are presented fairly in all material respects. Uh, so with that, we issued an unmodified or clean opinion as we have in past years. Uh, and once again, Brady, uh, Brett, 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 Jody, and their staff. <laughs> Sorry, Brett. Um, we really did an excellent job getting everything going for us. Um, item number two, um, I, I talk about this each year, but it's become increasingly important to talk about the distinction between the government-wide financial statements and the fund financial statements. So there, you have two, uh, two basic presentations within your financial statements. Uh, the fund statements reflect how you keep your books on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, it's really the basis upon which you uh, generally adopt your budgets and the reports that you receive at your, uh, at your monthly meetings. Uh, the government-wide statements combine all the funds into a single presentation, uh, but they also bring in capital assets, debt, and other long-term liabilities. So we'll see with this first statement and then on number three, the statement of net position, uh, what kind of difference that makes. Um, I'm going to highlight a few things here. Uh, cash, in, uh, cash and investments uh, were down about $40 million as uh, COP proceeds were utilized this year, so nothing unusual there. Uh, you had that money from the, from the COPs from the previous year, and, it was, and that amount of it was spent. Uh, other assets were up about 22%. Uh, that's mostly made up of uh, grant uh, receivables uh, being up about 782000 uh, liabilities were up 63 million, and uh, that's primarily that's almost all made up of pension liabilities increasing by 53 million, and the new uh, OPEP liability uh, sitting at 11 million. So that is you, you know a lot of the big distinction between the the government wide and the funds. You have this large pension liability, which is your portion of PARA's net pension liability included in the statements there, which is not included in your governmental funds. Uh, the uh, restricted net position, essentially your equity, was up about uh, 12%, and that's made up of an increase in debt service reserves as well as a uh, reclassification of food service balances into restricted. And then finally, the decrease in net position almost all related to your to the pair of liabilities. 
Uh, moving on to the, the general fund, so getting into a little bit more familiar territory, uh, the general fund, of course, your main operating fund, uh, we see that uh, your percentages uh, of fund balance to expenditures, uh, similar uh, to last year, you have about 71 days of reserves that cover ex uh, covering that much of expenditures. So really a good position to be sitting in. If I could say one thing on there, Tom. Yes. This is this is where we've talked about the difference between general funds, plural, and the general yes. fund. Okay. Yep, this is this is general funds plural. This one is just the general fund. Okay. In this case. Okay. So when you're looking at the financial statements, you're looking at the general funds plural as as Brett said. For this particular presentation, I just called out the general fund itself, but or fund ten to make it a little more clear. Uh, long term debt, uh, we saw a couple changes in there. Uh, your general obligations were uh, general obligation bonds were completely retired this year, and you uh, uh, got a new capital lease for the Allies building. Uh, otherwise, uh, debt service schedules were were paid per schedule, or debt service amounts were paid per schedule. This next area, I'm going to talk about uh, particular funds, uh, the general fund fund balance. So, fund ten uh, was down uh, about 1.8 million, uh, and that that was part of, I believe, uh, Brett. We talked about this being a uh, intentional fund uh, spend down of fund balances, but we see revenues were up about 9.8 million, made up of property taxes being up about 6.6, .6, and state equalization being up about 2.4. Uh, expenditures were down about 1.8 million. Uh, debt service fund, uh, down to a fund balance of zero with the retirement of the bonds. Uh, grant receipts were down about 97,000, so a pretty when you're, when you're talking about such a large fund, that's pretty much flat. Uh, capital projects, MLO fund balance, uh, down about 45 million. And again, that was, remember, I was talking about the 40, uh, 40 million in cash spent down that's in that fund. And finally, finally, the health fund fund balance was down 567,000 as claims exceeded premiums for the year. And, and again, that is, a, that is a fund that goes up and down fairly regularly. So it's, it's one where you kind of have to track your, uh, your premiums to make sure that over time it keeps pretty steady and you're not just, just dropping way down. But it's, it's expected that you'll have a, a good year and you'll have a bad year or a couple of goods and a couple of bads. And, and that's how that fund uh, tends to go. I mentioned we tested internal controls as part of the audit. Uh, we didn't have any significant findings to report back to you. So if you look Within the financial statements towards the end, uh, we have a report on internal control and no findings are listed there. Uh, likewise, uh, a big component of our audit is uh, reviewing and testing uh, federal grant awards. And we usually focus on a couple of those each year on a kind of a rotating basis. And again, there were no compliance issues identified. So really a good year this year for the finance department where we're not bringing in any uh, uh, negative comments. Yes. So once again, thank you, Brett and Jody. Not Freddie this time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and it's really just Jody. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Very good. And Ron. Ron, sorry. Sorry. Um, but you're doing good. Okay. All right. Uh, any questions about the financial statements themselves? Well, Tom, in the spirit of hearing about how the health services, mm -hmm. I mean, our nutrition services did comparatively. How how do we go as a district um, and other agencies that you're from? I mean, are we, are you say we're clean? Are we average? We above average? You uh, know, you're, how you're. Do, how do we do with our numbers? Uh, very good. Very good. First of all, you're, uh, you know, the metrics themselves, if you will, when we're looking at the days of fund balance, uh, that's probably. Right, you know, right about average, you've got a few that are running a bit higher, but then you've got some that are running uh, pretty tight and pretty low, actually. So having 70 days of, of fund balance, you know, covering fund balance is very strong, but but also uh, operationally, uh, I think you do, you know, it, you do a very good job. 
I just wanted um, points of clarity for folks that I think we all understand this, but I have a couple of folks listening who, who don't necessarily always hear some of our meetings. Sure. And so we talked about, you know, the cash and investment and that, you know, there'd be that fairly large shift there. And then also looking at the MO 3B fund. In both of those cases, that's us doing what we said we would do with the taxpayer money after we collected it. So that's right. Correct. So that's the, the money that we're investing in building those schools and doing all of the repair projects around the building. So if we didn't see those drops, we'd be doing something wrong because we'd be collecting the money and not using it for what we told our taxpayers to do. Of course. It's just when you look at the line, you know, someone who just sees the number and doesn't know what that money's for um, might not understand that piece. And then that para, yes. um, our portion of the para that makes it look like we are not financially responsible is <laughs> nothing that we have control over. It's what the state is imposing on everybody who contributes to para because of how they managed para after they collected the money from us. Um, so we, we have to show it on our balance sheet because the state is requiring every public entity to, to show the part of how that pension fund um, isn't quite meeting what we need it to meet for everybody who contributes to it, but that isn't an area of poor management on the district's part or a lack of paying our own contributions. We've done everything we're supposed to do. This is the state's way of trying to pass the buck on the parts that they haven't necessarily done fairly. Um, so those giant numbers aren't, you know, those aren't reality for any of us. That's sort of a, the state trying to make their books look better by trying to pass it down to us. I own, you know, nasty interpretation of it probably, <laughs> but yeah. um, I think that's also an important distinction when people look at those because if you don't know that that background, mm -hmm. um, you again would think that we weren't being very good with your money when we really are. I'll, so, I'll add a couple things too. One on uh, the paraliability. Uh, with some new uh, legislation that came out last June, uh, that's going to drop uh, in the next year. So expect that to go down actually quite a bit. Um, and then, uh, yeah, you know, it's kind of funny with the with the cash positions because I got to say it went up 68 million last year. Uh, but but nobody needs an explanation of that. That's good news, right? Yeah, I appreciate you mentioning those, things, Maria. Maria, because if you on that first page, you look two lines below the cash. And you see the increase in capital assets, and those are mm -hmm. totally materially connected. Those two, um, so appreciate you emphasizing that. And, and yeah, the pension liability thing. Are, do we let the do we let the state take that burden for that, or are we blame it on Gatsby? Or? Oh, we get to blame it on my profession. Oh, yeah. You know, they're making sure that yeah. us auditors stay in business and well employed. It is an unfortunate thing that that, that they impose on us because it's really, I think, uh, sacrificed kind of the use of that statement. Really, mm -hmm. in, in, in total, because it you know that number overwhelms everything else, and, and it just provides a really an inaccurate picture if that's all someone's looking at, unfortunately. But exactly, no mm -hmm. idea. You can't even tell. Like that number is so huge that you can't tell if, if we have a small problem in our own in our own yes. without the auditor telling us or a moderate what problem. piece of it, right? You're, yeah. It's so it's it's more than our budget in most years, right? <laughs> So um, it's like, okay, yeah, we, we, we messed up 200% of our budget, really. So um, so it's, I think that makes it, it makes it completely useless. We can't use that number to tell anything about how our district is functioning at all, but now we're required to show it. Um, and that makes it hard when you have conversations with folks that haven't been following it. But, but thank you very much for You're all welcome. of your work. Did anyone else have anything? Yeah, just real quick. Is there any suggestions that you have for us, Tom, in terms of as a board to keep an eye on, or especially for our constituents, anything that you're aware of? I mean, I know you've probably given suggestions to the uh, business office, but is there anything that we need to be aware of to help them function better or to let our taxpayers know what's going on? You know, I, I don't think so. I think it's a matter of, you know, continuing to uh, I expect regular updates to get, uh, you know, to receive reports that are not only correct, of course you expect that, but also readable and understandable uh, so that when you're, when you're reviewing the finances, you, you don't want to be the one that's a little embarrassed to ask a question because it doesn't make sense. You know, so I know for myself, even though you wouldn't believe it from the, the thick financial statements, as much as I can, I usually are, am trying to make things as simple for non-financial people as possible. So that's, that's one thing I would recommend in any, any circumstance where that can happen, that's a good thing. And I want to lift up our business office for doing exactly that. Since I've been on the board, they've gotten steadily better than 
I am able to understand them and, uh, and get it. I hope that I get it. Our constituents will get it as well. Thank you, sir. Anything further? I do have a question for Jody. I just want some clarification because we our audit's a little bit late coming in this year, and you had said something about Business Plus, and maybe this is me and we needed to share the line, but I understand that we had a couple of our charters that we're waiting on that slows yes. down a little bit. Yes, we are also waiting on charters. Okay, but they're all in and we're covered because we yes. can't submit without the charters. Correct. I can't so, finish up my pieces mm -hmm. to even submit to the state yeah. or to give Tom his numbers until I have all their numbers. So, so I wanted to pull the sword out of you. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> Um, and I want to thank Tom and his team um, over the years working with a handful of different auditors. Um, sometimes you get scared of them. I don't, <laughs> I don't but um, sometimes. And Tom has been very welcoming over the past um, few years working with him. Um, that first year was like my first days of coming on board. So um, I, yeah, sure I did. Was, was <laughs> Um, so it's a little bit different this year. I knew, actually knew what I was talking about when I could say, yeah, I know what those numbers are. Um, but I do appreciate his team, and he, he has a great team that he works for his toss. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Nice Anything further? Thank you. Okay, then with that, thank you very much. Thank you. And we are on to our next agenda item, which is the 3B project update. Looks like Mr. Almeida will be doing that. Uh, Pedro Almeida, Chief Operations Officer. I'll go through a very quick uh, good date on that stuff. Well, no, that's for the date of the passage. Uh, MLO 3B project update. So, a couple of weeks ago, we had the opportunity to go to Inspiration View Elementary School, our new school that's under construction. And when I say we, I mean the Chief Officers, John Graham from the board as well as a number of uh, as well as a number of other folks across the district and uh, leaders across the district uh, and it was it was absolutely a fantastic tour and it was quite uh, illuminating to see the progress that's happening in the school uh, the first thing that we'll point out is that the contingency is tracking better than we were anticipated um, so we have not had to dip into the contingency funds in the early stages of construction the way uh, the way that happens on occasionally and that means that we're tracking really well for the budget right now. We've only had about 22% of the contingency funds have been spent. It says construction is on, it, the slide says construction is in progress and on schedule. We're actually uh, ahead of schedule and we will continue to be as long as the weather continues to hold out for us. And as long as we have any other uh, unexpected, uh, any unexpected uh, delays. As we look across the board, the work is coming along quite, uh, quite effectively. We now have city power that is applied to the building as opposed to, uh, as opposed to them having to work run off of local power. And uh, the progress is coming along quite, uh, quite smoothly. A couple of photos, and folks will be able to see this at home a lot clearer if they have it on, on their computers. But uh, you can see that the exterior is coming along quite well. Stucco is continuing to go up on the building. The picture on the left is from the commons area which is gonna be a large open area in the middle of the school. And on the right side is your uh, average uh, hallway. That's a classroom wing on level one. You can see the large glass, uh, the large glass windows, which will, be, which will provide a, a good view for teachers from inside of the classroom to students that are working in the entire classroom wing area there. And another picture on the right from the commons area downstairs. Cabinetry is starting to go in, in a number of other rooms. Uh, carpeting is absolutely in on uh, quite a few of the school rooms as well. So again, the progress is moving around quite uh, quite nicely as we look across the board. On the picture on the right is a view of the maker space, which is going to be on the upstairs area, which is going to be a multi-use area, a multi a multi-functional area upstairs. Switching over to P2 projects, we're currently in the process of scoping the P2 projects for this uh, upcoming summer and working with the schools. Here by the end of February, we should have a very clear, clearly defined path on what projects are going to be getting. Uh, worked on over the span of the summer. We're really working with the schools to try to zero out their P2 budgets this summer. Uh, and so therefore, we, we're really tightening up the budget, going back and closing out the books on projects that have already been complete and giving them the tally so we have an understanding of what we have left to do. And we're targeting a lot of, uh, quite a bit of work to still be done this summer. But hopefully, if things go well by the end of the summer, we'll be mostly complete with the P2 projects. So probably still be a couple of uh, a couple of loose ends that need to be cleaned up after that. Um, we will have that projection for you here at the next board meeting with regard to the summer projects because again we're going to we should finalize that here at the end of the month in february 
And outside of that, uh, we will also give a, uh, a little bit more of a roll up on where we stand with P3 and P4 budgets, which are also in the process right now of being closed out with regard to the numbers on those. And any questions? Not a question, but more of a comment. I want to say thanks to uh, Vice President Graham for uh, attending community meetings that we did for Inspiration View last week. Uh, you, you were able to attend two, and I was able to attend one. We, we went primarily anticipating that they would have questions about building, traffic, anything like that. It turns out everything was curriculum related. They wanted to know about enrollment. They wanted to know about programs and offerings. It was it was great because that shows we're further along, and they didn't have any questions about that. Yeah. We were able to go more to the heart of why the school is existing. So uh, thanks to uh, Principal Rigdon for being there and for John being there, too. I actually had uh, several parents come up to me uh, the first day, especially to say that they really were looking forward to the school and uh, you know having their kids in that art integrated type curriculum. They're really looking forward to it. Tyler, did you have something? Thank you. Thank you. So our next item is a new job description for a portfolio of schools. Good evening, Andy Franco, iConnect Zone Leader. Uh, just want to present a job description to the board tonight. Um, given the name of the job, this focuses on the big rock of portfolio of schools, obviously. So uh, in the iConnect Zone in particular, we uh, find that there is a need to better support the, uh, the, the managing and the, the infrastructure around portfolio school options that we, we have for our students. Um, in particular, our focus is on our um, operated schools within the zone, but there would be some emphasis placed on charter school options and informing families and working with families um, on those options as well and, and making sure that that message is clear. So uh, in the job description, uh, it lists out the, the, the duties of this position, um, but as an important note, I would like to just inform the board that we currently have a position within the zone that is homeschool liaison, and that position has historically worked um, directly with the homeschool community um, in a number of ways. Um, this position would absorb that and, uh, and extend into not just homeschool, but also into our options with our blended online, our alternative education, early college models, um, and the homeschool. So we are seeing an influx of uh, homeschoolers that are interested in extending their learning into different modalities, and uh, we want to be attentive to that, making sure that we're um, working with families. But we're also seeing that um, just the variety of learning models that we offer within this home um, need a lot of communication and uh, support around those things, both at the building level with building administration, but then extending it to the families as far as um, uh, properly informing them and, and getting them on the right pathway. So that's the intention of this role. Um, specialist is a, uh, a good word for it because you do need to have some specialty and understanding all the different dynamics. And so we look forward to um, getting approval from the board to move this Questions? Any uh, feed, uh, feedback from the homeschool program in regards to just kind of shifting that? Because they probably got used to that community liaison and now it's shifting over. Any, any feedback from them? Um, not in the negative sense. Uh, there is a reason to shift some of the responsibilities away from the homeschool uh, program explicitly from the liaison position. We were covering some uh, administrative support responsibilities in that position as well um, that will need to shift back directly to the homeschool program um, but there's capacity within the program to do that and um, that will free up some talent and expertise in other areas to extend beyond just um, supporting that homeschool community like I said. Sure another question would be um, and this would also include portfolio schools world could be even beyond just what we have that this person would be able to kind of explore, maybe even possibly recommend or be a part of any future charter schools or other iConnect Zone type yeah. offerings. Yeah, you're reading my mind a little bit. Um, so this is kind of the entry level position um, that we would explore for what a portfolio of school specialists would do. Um, but in particular, I think we have an opportunity to continue our learning um, by understanding what parents really want, what they're looking for, and then being very specific, um, even as far as uh, adopting some new strategies with our request for proposals as far as charter schools are concerned, but also when we're bringing new proposals to the board for operated programs and schools, 
we would have more uh, results and data to, to provide as evidence to why that would be a good decision. And so right now we're stretched a little thin in the iConnect zone. We've got a lot going on uh, as far as operating schools. And uh, so doing some of the additional work that's needed to bring that information to the board in future tense is, uh, is needed in this position would help support that as well. Super, thank you. I like this position. I would recommend moving it forward. Any other further questions? So, uh, I understand the uh, basically this is going to be the iConnect Zone spokesperson and knowledge subject matter expert on the portfolio of schools. Are they going to also be a program? Specialist, are they going to understand the programs in each of those schools and say the pathways that each of those schools offer? Yeah. Is there a potential that this position kind of morphs into a uh, iConnect zone, or not maybe morphs, but assumes some responsibilities or their plans for a workplace learning specialist or something to that effect? Because I know we have one at the district level, and one in uh, the uh, Sand Creek Zone, correct? Sand Creek Zone. Uh, yep. And so I, I also see that if we're talking about portfolio schools and we're talking about the programs and the pathways, whether it's the next logical step, it seems to me is this person is also a workplace learning specialist as well, who has some of those duties because they're going to have to say, you know, we have this culinary program here. This is what you can do and you know maybe someone also helps to get those internships later on for those people in that program or the construction program things like that yeah uh, i think a good example to maybe your answer your question is uh, we oftentimes hear from students in particular uh, at, at patriot high school and spring studio uh, and even at ppac uh, a number of times will tell us um, I wish I would have known about this earlier. That's a that's an example that uh, we hear often, actually. And uh, the reality is, is that our building principals are tasked with a lot, and there are a lot of things going on. And our counseling staff is uh, also tasked with quite a few things. So the outreach beyond our, our boundaries of the school is, is difficult. And so um, this isn't intended to be a program of itself. It is intended to be a specialist of our programs within the zone. Um, and that person um, can certainly do the outreach that is needed to inform others within our district and beyond our district boundaries. Because um, a lot of those students um, that use that term, I wish I would have known about this earlier, are residing in other areas and things like that and looking for a solution that maybe their district doesn't currently offer. So um, yes, there's absolutely some intention to do some outreach with this position. You know, it's funny that you bring that up because as a parent who had kids attend D49, I wish I knew that earlier before I was on the board because there were things I found out on the board that I really wish I knew as a parent and I probably should have paid a little bit more attention. Yeah. Uh, I think we have a more robust communications team, thank you, and uh, even at the building level and at the pathway level, program level, where I as a parent would now get that information that I you know, wasn't aware of you know, in the past. So I think we're really moving in those directions. So it's uh, good to hear. Thank you. Okay. So um, any further questions? Okay. And so Kevin has already said move forward, Dave. Yes. So we have a, a consensus to move forward. Let's put it on the next agenda for approval. Thank you, Mr. Franco. And our last item is election planning, which should only be, um, I think right now all we have on our plate is the, uh, um, the, the board seats. I, I'm a little tired, but Brett had the sheet prepared. Um, yeah, there's two of you you don't have to, and yeah, you're definitely not having me. So, um, so I'm not sure what. If you can click it for it. Is that the only slide we've got for this one? Right? It's just that. Okay. So I think all we kind of need to talk about now is as a reminder that we do have a board election upcoming. We have three director of district seats that will be up for election. Um, so we need to start some outreach um, and make sure people are aware of the availability of being able to run for those seats. 
And I think um, board members are willing to have conversations as well, but we need help identifying people who might be interested. And so if you're in one of those director districts and know of folks who might be interested in running for the seats, if you can let Donna know or kind of connect with Donna, she can help us um, be able to um, have conversations with folks, help them kind of know what is it like to be on the board, what is their time commitment like, um, and kind of help them get a feel for it. It's better to start those conversations earlier rather than later, uh, because we won't, the paperwork won't be out until August, um, or end of July, beginning of August is when all of the paperwork comes out to be able to try to be on the ballot. However, um, you know, it, it's much smarter to start those conversations now, and obviously if we're trying to recruit folks to run in summer when there's no school, it becomes even harder. The director district seats that will be on this ballot are director district two, three, and four. And one of those seats is complete, will be completely open, um, regardless of decisions of, of current board members, whether or not they're choosing to run. District two currently has no one represented yet, I believe, right? District two is the empty seat that will be up. And then um, districts three and four are also on the ballot. And so if you're folks who reside in that area or staff members who work in those um, zones, if you can help starting to have those conversations with people who are um, involved in your school and in our community so that we can uh, have some quality candidates, that would be awesome. Does anybody have more to add? Mr. Nankero, are the zone district, the district zone maps for the elections, are they on the school district's website where can people can find that? Uh, they should, they ought to be. Okay. They are. I'm yeah. looking at them right now. That was just to encourage people that that information is there. You can look at the map, see where you live, see what zone you're in. So, I actually, yeah, we just, that was a plug in the form of a question. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, um, as far as that goes, and then I'd like to encourage all the introverts out there to run. I'm living proof that you don't have to talk to the other school. So the more introverts we get, the shorter the meetings. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything What's for uh, Okay, does anybody have anything else they want to add to that discussion for now? Okay, then we are on to other business. I do have one bit of other business, if I may, uh, Mr. President. Um, just would like to, I connected with Adam and Communications uh, to develop a thank you card that would just be from the board, say D49, and then from the board or something like that. I haven't seen it yet, but was just wondering if it would be appropriate for us to uh, spend about $53 and 41 cents on that. And it would be available for all five board members to use as a thank you note. And we'd write your various notes to different people throughout the district for their participation. That just kind of is an extra touch. So I thought I'd ask if that would be acceptable. So that's something we, we need feedback from folks on as an expenditure from board budget. I will say past practice has been to use district stationery. Um, so we have, there are, there are note cards that say District 49 and just don't specifically say a note from a board member or something. Um, and a part of the reason behind that was to be consistent and also um, because we don't go through very much of it. And so it's more often and not that as the district changes what their um, what our images are that we're using on our things, if we're using district stationery, it gets updated more. Just to about to get it in a second. Mm -hmm. I think of, that's up to you guys. Um, just, you know, for me, using the district letterhead basically as a literal appreciation of that's what a board member decides to do, I think that's appropriate. So you would be able to use district yeah. rather than a specific board member? Yeah, not necessarily an extra. You know, card, but you know, just the letter. Yeah, and I'll just use the cost. The reason I it was not to go overboard. I'm not buying, you know, like this to print 5,000 versions of this. It's just a simple, small number. It would be available for all five board members, not necessarily just myself. Kevin, do you have a preference of having board specific stationery or using district? I have no preference. <laughs> All right, so then we'll leave it as district at this point because we don't have a consensus to have board specific. All right, so now with that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Are you looking at me? I'm muted. Sorry. Okay. Well, it's up to you guys. We can sit until I have a motion because I can't make it, guys. Can I make the record here? I move to adjourn. Okay. Second. 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 Second.
motion. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none of vote. Butcher? Aye. Kristen? Aye. Graham? Aye. Libya Wright? Aye. Motion carries. We are adjourned at 725.